This video is going to talk about organic naming for the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And it's going to talk to you also about organic stick structures. The organic prefixes are needed in order to count the number of carbons. Anytime you are counting carbons, you use these prefixes. Uh, meth is number one, eth is two, Prope is 3, Bute is 4. After that, they are the same prefixes that we used when we did covalent naming. Pent 5, Hex 6, Hept 7, Oct 8, Known 9, and Dec 10. You will use the A when the next letter after the A is a consonant. There are different types of chains depending on the kinds of bonds. If your carbons are held together with a single covalent bond, just one bond, then you have an alkane, and that's the letter A, alkane. When you have a single bond, we hold the carbons together with a dash. So this is a single bond of between two carbons. It's a C, the dash, and another C. Single bonds contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms per um, carbon atom, and that is said to be saturated. Um, to figure out how many hydrogens your bond will have, it is two times the number of carbons plus two for the ends. So, in this diagram, they're showing you um, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons bonded together. The H's are understood, but if you want to see a full diagram of what they would look like, this diagram in the lower right-hand corner lets you see how they are attached. Each carbon requires four bonds. and because it has four valence electrons. So every carbon will get four bonds. That is why the number of carbons times two plus two on the ends equals the number of hydrogens that you have. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times two is 12 plus two gives me 14 carbons, and if you were to individually count the carbons that are over here on the side, you'll see there are 14 carbons. So name this structure. So we just count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five. There are five carbons, and each of these carbons are held together with a single line. So that means it's an alkane. So Single carbons, five carbons is pent, and single bonds is ane for a total name of pentane. Name this carbon compound. I've got one, two, three, four carbons. Four carbons is bute. They're single bonded together, so that would equal ane. This is butane. Now let's talk about a minute what this is. This is called a stick structure. And a stick structure is just a more shorthanded way. Remember, this is already a shorthanded way because each one of these would have hydrogens on them. So I'd have a hydrogen at each of these locations. So just writing the C's and their bonds is already shorthand. This is a shorter shorthand. Each one of the ends represents a carbon. So there are one, two, three, four carbons in this diagram. So it also is butane. So the name of both of these carbons are butane. 
single bonds here. If there were double bonds, there would be two lines between each of these somewhere, wherever they may be. Name this car carbon compound. Count the carbons. One, two, three. This also is the same. One, two, three. That makes this propane. Name this carbon compound. Two carbons. This is the same thing. You, one side, two side. You, it's just the pokey ends. So this is ethane. The next type of chain involves having at least one double bond somewhere between the carbons. That makes me an alkene. It contains a lower ratio of hydrogens because of the double bonds. Remember, each carbon just needs two, um, each carbon needs just four bonds, and to figure out how many hydrogens you have, it's two times the number of carbons plus two minus two times the number of double bonds that you have. So let's look at a diagram here. First of all, let's go through the math of the problem. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So two times the number of carbons, two times six. Plus two, remember those were the ones that were on the end. Then minus two times the number of double bonds. There's only one double bond here. That's where this number one in the equation is coming from. So there will only be 12 hydrogens here. If there was not a double bond, there would be 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This carbon right here, this carbon right here marked in red, has four bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4. And because of this double bond, he does not need the extra hydrogen. This carbon has 1, 2, three, four. These are covalent bonds, so they're shared. This carbon, carbon number one, and carbon number two are sharing these double bonds. What is the name of this carbon compound? One, two, three, four, five, Six. Using our naming system from just a little while ago, you might have said this was hex and ene. And it is hexene to some respect. And we'll talk more about what it is beyond that in just a second. So hexene. But then again, what is this carbon compound? One, two, three, four, five, six. That would make this also hexene. So what's the difference between those two bonds? Well, of course, where the double bond is located is the difference. Here's where the double bond is on the first hexene we talked about, and here's where the double bond is on the second hexene. That makes them completely different compounds. So how do we tell them apart? We must tell the reader where the double bond is. And we use lowest golf score. So you'll notice that when I counted up here, I just counted from left to right, just like normal, um, like I normally read. However, this compound could be floating around in a beaker or in the air. And therefore, it doesn't lay flat on a piece of paper. Therefore, to figure out which side number one is, we count both directions. And the lowest number to the double bond is then the front carbon. So if I were to count from left to right, then my double bond would first appear at carbon number four. If I were to count from right to left, my double bond would first appear at carbon number two. Since carbon number two is smaller, that is then determined to be 
the first part of the front of the chain. That's the front end of the chain. We don't use this naming numbering at all. That was just for us to count which way it was, um, which way would be closer. And carbon number two is the winner in the lowest score wins. So this compound would be called 2-hexene. If you have a triple bond, the difference, the only difference in the rule is why NES, eins, would be how it would be said. And it has a number of hydrogens of two times the number of carbons plus two, minus two times every double bond, minus four times every triple bond. You can use this one math problem to figure out all of them because in the event you have no double bonds or if you had no triple bonds, those two numbers would be zeroed out and you'd be back to the single bond. Each one of these is just adding a, an additional step and if you don't have those bonds, then you wouldn't add that step. So here's um, the math showing you the number of hydrogens and why four hydrogens lose their job. So this carbon right here needs four bonds. This is a triple bond shared between these two carbons. So this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. So he doesn't need this hydrogen or this hydrogen. And this carbon has three four bonds, so these two hydrogens therefore lose their job. Um, so this six carbons only has ten hydrogens due to the triple bond. When you have less hydrogens than the original amount as in a single bond, you are said to be unsaturated. So let's give it a try. Same rules apply. So this is them showing you numbering where the first contact of the triple bond is. If I go left to right, it's at carbon one. If I go right to left, it's at carbon three. Therefore, this is the correct way. And then what would be the name of this compound? Well, one, two, three, four carbons makes me butte. Having at least one triple bond makes me butine. We must tell the reader where the triple bond is located. It first comes in contact with carbon number one. So this carbon compound is called one butine. Count from the closest end. So one, two. Well, if I count from this direction, one, two. So either way, this compound is two butyne. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is hept. Each one of these only has single bonds. So that would be hept and single bonds, ane, heptane. This one would require some counting because I have to tell the reader where the double bond is located. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I counted the other way, I would, it would be a higher number. So three is the contact first contact with the double bond that makes this a three hept and because of the double bond ene three hept ene the way I remember the different um, ane, ene, and eins um, is that they are alphabetical um, I'll talk about that again right after I show you this example when you have more than one you add up where all of the triple bonds are. So if I were to count this direction, my, trip, my single 
sorry, I apologize. I believe I said triple bond a moment ago, and it's a double bond. My double bonds are at 3 and 5. That'd be a total of 8. And if I counted in the opposite direction, they would be at 2 and 4, which would be a total of 6. We use golf scores, which means lowest score wins. That means that this second numbering system from right to left is the order. So we tell the reader where we have our double bonds. We have them at 2 and 4. So it's a 2, 4 hept because there are 7. That's 7 carbons. And then we say two bonds, two double bonds by saying diene here. So what do you have two of? Enes. These are the Greek prefixes. They are not the carbon prefixes because we are not counting the number of carbons. This is counting the number of double bonds. Okay, so let me talk to you uh, just briefly. We've got anes, which are single bond, enes, which are double bonds, and eins, which are triple bonds. You'll notice that they're in alphabetical order. 1, A, 2, E, 3, Y. So even though they're not A, B, C, they are in alphabetical order, one, two, three. Hopefully this helps you.